Hi, my name is Chuck Dury. I'm the math department facilitator at Davidson High School, um, helping you make some decisions on the math courses here at the high school level. Um, if your eighth grader is in Math 8, you'll likely just head straight to Algebra 1. Um, if they really struggled with math, math 8, we do have a workshop available to help them. Um, most of our eighth graders are in Algebra 1, and in that case, there's the most options. Um, struggling with Algebra 1, um, a foundational course like that, if they really struggled with it, we, we usually recommend to retake it as a ninth grader. Um, really help their GPA, get a good baseline foundation in Algebra 1 skills. Um, but if they did pass Algebra 1 as an 8th grader, um, there's two options. There's GAC 1 and Geometry. Um, geometry is um, a much faster paced course, a lot more independent learning, more depth of knowledge. Um, GAC 1 is slower, uh, much slower course. It's about half of the Geometry curriculum um, and obviously less um, independent learning is required. Um, and then lastly, um, if you're in geometry as an 8th grader, um, you'll head to Honors Algebra 2. Hi, I'm Mr. Mate. I'm the English Department Head here at uh, Hillier Davidson High School, and I'm here to try to help you make a decision between Honors English 9 and English 9 for your incoming freshman uh, this coming year. Uh, the biggest difference, I think, between the two classes you need to be aware of um, is sort of an ad its attitude. It's a growth mindset. It's the a willingness to accept constructive criticism um, and to put in the work that's necessary to uh, deal with the literature that we will be studying. Um, what you're looking for really is a, is a student who loves to read. Someone who's carrying a book around all the time, asks you to go to the library, asks to uh, go buy a book at the local bookstore or download something um, on a very consistent basis and so that that's something that we look at right away in terms of academics um, honors English students are can, are uh, expected to come in with a very good command of grammar and whereas a uh, regular English student probably would need to brush up on those things in the class and that's accounted for um, in addition you would find that an honors English student would be ex would be held to a little bit of a higher standard in grading so as we use the common core standards what we try to do is um, look for exceeds expectations when we deal with an honor student. Um, the other class that you might um, be interested in or, or you might be lined up for is Honors English 10. So if you had Honors English 9 at the middle school, you would be heading into Honors English 10. Um, what you need to know about that is it, it still has the honors quality, the same qualities we heard for Honors English 9. Um, the difference between Honors 9 and Honors 10 from the middle school, however, um, is that the maturity level at the high school um, is, is much greater. And so the literature that is studied um, is studied at a much more mature level um, as our Honors 10 um, ninth graders are mixed in with the sophomores. Hi, my name is Bonnie Bloom and I'm the Science Department Facilitator here at Davidson and I want to help you decide where your, fr your upcoming freshman student should be in terms of their science class. So if your student has taken on is taking Honors Science 9 right now then they're going to go into Honors Biology next year. Otherwise your student is going to take Science 9 here at Davidson. And there's regular Science 9 and Honor Science 9. The difference between the two of them is very much the math level. In Honor Science 9, we assume that your student has successfully completed Algebra 1. So they're going to hit the same introductory chemistry and introductory physics as regular Science 9 but they're going to go into a little more depth and a little more mathematical content. We're also going to expect a little more independence from those students. Both of them have a semester of chemistry and a semester of physical of, of little physics, um, so that's going to be the same, but really it's the math that differentiates the two. Hi, my name is Angie Rader. I am the department facilitator of the social studies department here at Davidson High School. I want to explain the difference between World Studies and Honors World Studies, which are the two social studies classes that your uh, upcoming freshmen have the ability to take. Um, World Studies 1 and 2, first semester 1, second semester 2, are survey course. Um, they cover, they span from 1 and 2, they will cover from the Enlightenment to the modern world. Um, world Studies uh, one and two, but it's just it's a survey course. It's a brief introduction into topics um, that have happened, time frames, and vocabulary, uh, and concepts that are pertinent to the study of world history. Honors World um, is the same time frame as World Studies one and two. However, 
the emphasis will be on um, more in-depth coverage of those topics, concepts. And the expectation is that the student will work at home independently doing the reading and learning the vocabulary on their own so that when they arrive in class time for analysis and synthesis of primary documents and events that have happened in history can be discussed. Hi, my name is Lisa Brown and I'm the World Language Department Facilitator here at Davidson High School. In the Huey City Schools we offer Chinese, French, German, and Spanish as our world languages. We encourage all students to study a world language. It is not a required class for graduation from the state of Ohio, but for employment futures and for uh, entrance into the university, foreign languages are a very important part of your student's academic career. If your student is currently enrolled in a level one language at the middle school and they are having success, then they would continue in level two at the high school. If you've not yet started in a, a world language, then your first decision is which language you want to take. A lot of those decisions are made based on family history. Do you have some German in your background? Are your grandparents from France? Things like that. Or looking at your future careers. Where do I want to live? What do I want to study? What language would be the best for me in that situation? A world language learner needs to be adventuresome. They need to study and think about the world around them. How are they going to use the language? And what will happen if they don't understand every word? The teachers in our program speak the language in the classroom almost exclusively, so your student needs to be able to adapt their thinking and go with the flow with the teachers.